This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. One, bingo, we're back. Oh, oh my God, it's Wednesday. It's the 4 p.m. show, a little after 4 p.m. It's Hawaii, the state of clean energy from the Energy Policy Forum. I'm Jay Fidel of Think Tech. I want to go through the table here. To my left is uh, Shannon Tanganon. Hi. Okay, Leslie Cole Brooks and Ted Peck. Wow, what a crowd. Okay, <laughs> Shannon is from Hawaiian Electric Company. Leslie Cole Brooks is from Distributed Energy Resources Council of Hawaii, Dirk. Yeah. Okay. And, and Ted, yeah. who's been around energy for a long time, when I was a small child, he was doing energy in one way or another. <laughs> and he, and he, he is the nice. CEO really? of Holu He's Energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so we're going to divide the show in two parts. The first part is to report on what Hawaiian Electric is doing um, in uh, Westlock. They've got a, a Navy project on Navy land, and you're going to do some interesting renewables out there. want to know more about that. What's happening, Shannon? We are um, going to be building a 20-megawatt solar facility out there. Um, REC Solar is going to be our contractor. This will be um, – it's an interesting project because it's on Navy land. Uh, we're leasing the land in exchange for le the lease. We are going to do electrical upgrades at their Navy-owned facilities. Mm. So over the course of the 25-year um, life of the project, we expect to save customers $109 million. Because why? How does that work? How, how does what you're doing save them the money? It's, it'll be the lowest cost renewable energy to date ah. once, once it's in service, less than $0.08 cents, um, Per mega, I mean, I'm per kilowatt hour. Sorry. Wow, that's pretty good. Yes, it's How very. How do you get low. that low? Magic. Magic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> well, it's leasing the land. If we were to do, you know, this project, we, if we had to own the land and whatnot, it, it would be it would be much higher. The so, cost. Who, so who are the players? The Navy is the landowner. Navy is the Hawaiian landowner. Electric. Um, you're you're hiring somebody to actually build the to thing. To build it. Who's gonna Who's gonna build it? REC -E Solar. We'll okay, mm -hmm. and uh, and then it, it's when we look at it at the end. What is it? A, a solar farm? Is that what? Yeah, it's a solar facility. 80,000 80, plus solar panels. That's big. It's it's huge. and Oahu. Yeah. That's really saying yeah. something. Yeah. Hard to get that much land. And it's on land that the Navy can't build on otherwise. So you know we're utilizing land that would would stay barren. Yeah, you know. and this is going to serve who? How, how is this going to serve either the Navy or the public? It serves everyone. Um, Oahu customers, you know, will be able to feed off of that from the grid. Um, it serves people on base. Um, and, you know, everyone really wins with this because yeah. the Navy will get the electrical upgrades that they need for their own um, in electrical lieu of the infrastructure. Rent. I really like yes, that in lieu of Contra rent. kind of mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we're really excited about it. We broke ground on Monday, and we expect it to be up and running in December. Hopefully, I'll be back in December to let you know that it's yeah, would it's, you? In op okay, it's yeah, operational. Make a, note, make a note of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this, is, this is a new idea here. This is not same old. This is a new no, idea. Somebody yeah. got creative on this one. How does it differ? I mean, why? You know, what is happening that is notable in terms of a shift in the way we do these things? Well, I think we're trying to establish, you know, really good partnerships with the military. I mean, we're seeing it here with the Navy um, at Schofield. We're going to be, you know, we partnered with the Army to build our um, Schofield generating station. And that's going to be run on biofuels and, you know, normal fuels. So. We're, we're shifting to the renewable. And what I yeah. get is that the Hawaiian Electric, uh, as a utility, is getting more hands-on into the development of renewable, renewables itself. It is taking a position on this. Mm -hmm. It is investing in this. It is, it is the, the organizing uh, entity that's exactly. making all of this happen. Yeah. That's, that's a new thought. But usually it would just let it go on an RFP basis. Now this is, this is uh, more hands-on, all right? This is more hands-on. Um, we, what we're trying to do is really, you know, take advantage of the partnerships that we we've established with the military. And yeah. so, you know, we're able to come in, you know, leasing the land and, you know, 
you know, for this one, trading for upgrades. So it, it's, it's lower cost all around. Our customers will see the value in it by lower, you know, lower pricing for, you know, eight cents, less than eight cents per kilowatt. Well, that is really terrific kilowatt. considering yeah. our history of these rates on yeah. renewables. So is this, is, uh, is, is this going to happen again? Oh, we hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I you know, it's, the land is scarce. So it's, you know, we'll just have to see what happens. But I think in general, we just want to see renewables, whether it's private rooftop solar, you know, grid scale solar, you know, we just need to reach our, our RPS. Yeah. yeah. And it's, the key to this project, it sounds like to me, is the land. Yes, the land the makes land. it feasible. Exactly. It, 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 it pencils out a lot better yes. when you have control of the land, such as in this case. Yes. Well, definitely. good for you. Are you the project manager? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Thankfully. Do you want to be the project manager? <laughs> no. I I'll don't. make a call. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm good just talking about it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you have to come back at the okay. end of the end of the year when it's done. Okay. And uh, show us some pictures of how it got built I and all will. that. We will. Thank you so much for having yeah, us. Yeah, thank you. Now you got to go back and actually start working on it, right? This yeah, afternoon? exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, start <laughs> the shovels. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Shannon. <laughs> Shannon Tenganon from okay. Hawaiian Electric. Thank we're you. gonna take a short break. Okay. We'll come back and we're gonna talk to uh, Leslie Cole Brooks and Ted Peck about mm, jobs. I love jobs. We all love jobs. Yeah. We'll be right back. You'll see. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Three. Okay, we're back. Oh, I told you we'd come back. We came back. Look at that, huh? We're still here. Some things are <laughs> true and predictable. Yeah. I like that. <clears throat> okay, so here, we're talking about jobs, let's say, Cole Brooks. We're talking about distributed energy. And you see the landscape of distributed energy, so you can see it clearly. I can. You have the, you have the picture. I do. And Ted, you've been around energy since I was a kid, and you have the picture clearly, too. So what about jobs? Have we got a real future on this? And by the way, this is important because we're looking for diversified industry. We're looking for a diversified economy. You know, in the early 2000s, we, we tried to do that in technology. The technology sector really didn't happen. Mm. There's something recently in the paper to suggest that it's really not all that robust, even now after all these years. Uh, but maybe energy can do what we had hoped. What's going on? Well, for one thing, when you think about it, the jobs have to be done here. They can't be outsourced. So like what we just heard about the solar farm, it's going to be built here. And so people live here and they make money and they spend it here. So that's, that's the good news. Can't be outsourced. And the other thing is that it's a good job. You feel good about doing it because you're helping the planet and you can't go wrong there. So are there jobs? There's lots of jobs, um, but they're changing a lot. Um, I have kind of a long list. I had to bring notes because there's so many different ins and outs to the different kinds of jobs that I have here. Okay. Um, so, uh, so that's your general you, landscape. It's, it's, it's overall. It's good They're for us. Here. And you're, you're optimistic jobs. about I'm it. I'm optimistic then. about it. Um, the market here, overall, the unemployment rate in Hawaii is it's so 2%. low. It's and really I won't say low. who told me this, but I was asking different, different people. I won't say who. I won't even indicate. Um, what does it take? And this person said, just send me somebody with a pulse. So, so, so it is hard to, it, it's, it's just everyone is employed, and if you're not employed, it's because you're on your way to your next job. So, um, um, you're excited. No, well, that's I'm, what I was told. Let me, what let can me, I say? Let me throw a, I did a the wrench in all that for a minute I was, I was and say a lot, of the, a lot of the jobs, a lot of the jobs we have are jobs that are really, you don't want to take it. 
and um, you know, then hotel jobs and, and right. scut jobs yeah. of one kind, or digging ditches. You can get a job digging well, ditches. Well, I guess I'm, you know? I'm talking about generally within the, the trades construction. Um, you know, if you're up on the roof, if you're an electrician, you ride around in a golden chariot. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you, you know, I mean, you know, really, that was always the really. Case, you I know, well know, yeah. but it's really worse now. It's, just, yeah, it's yeah, really. It is know, very. Yeah, you know, we we've, we've been through some hiring over the last year. And uh, finding competent people is really so. What's really, competent? Really hard. What does that mean? Well, we, we have to have electrical engineering uh, training, or what? Um, well, you you know, if you're if you're in the trades, it's having ba some basic skills, some basic backgrounds, you know, you oh, because you have that last, yeah. um, you know, you're, you're really, as she said, at statistical full employment. You almost uh, you have to either find somebody who is not doing well or relationally or whatever or they just want to move on from you know so basically you have to hire somebody from somebody else or you have to bring in somebody from the mainland which is fraught uh, with all kinds fraught, of challenges fraught. Yeah. it's very challenging yeah. right oh that's why what you know HCC what the community colleges do is really important because it's taking people who as you said are you know potentially you know historically low skill workers who you know, after you do that for a couple of years, you get a sense of, gosh, it would really be good if I built some skills. My personal opinion, don't mean to hit the mic there, um, we have in our educational system, our secondary educational system, we've made a mistake because we have eliminated the trade school route. We have taken people who are going into blue collar schools, we put them into a college prep environment where they're bored. And when kids are bored, they make trouble. And so it really, it wastes their time. They waste the time and create an unhealthy environment for those who want to be college prep. And it ends up being really a, a very deleterious kind of environment. We really need to reinvigorate the trades at the secondary and the immediate post-secondary side so that we have um, people that can, you know, can be competent in doing the trades. We have a lot of people, especially in the trades, who are older and are going to be, you know, we've got a, you know, all the, the baby boomers, they're in the approaching retirement if they're not, you know, later in that stage. So we really need to reinvigorate our, our, our trades education. Well, let me, let me throw this at you. you know, this is in the, in the middle of the Abercrombie days when uh, the Energy Policy Forum organized a, uh, um, a tour, actually unions organized the tour. Dwight uh, Takamini was the director of labor at the time and he, he had a big part in this. And so we went around from union facility to union facility, especially the electricians, right, uh, to see what they were doing to train their young apprentices who come into the industry and, and want to learn. And uh, although I agree certainly that the school, the DOE doesn't have a trade school system, Maybe maybe the uh, uh, junior colleges do you know KCC and the like. Um, HCC is really HCC, the leader for that. HCC. Yeah. Um, but uh, here the unions have the capacity to uh, and and the motivation for that matter uh, to to train people on, for example, installing solar. You know, and we went to a number of of um, number of these facilities where uh, they were talking about installing solar, talking about training kids. I shouldn't kids; they were not so young. Um, but they were out of high school, sometimes out of college, and they got trained, and, and now they would be, you know, journeymen, and they would be more valuable in the union marketplace for this work. I don't know what happened with that. Mm. I don't know if it was as successful mm. as they were planning for it to be. But I, I just throw it at you because I think that is one way that you develop trained people. And the unions win, too. They certainly do. And everybody win, win, win. If you yes, have the they're, unions they're do good, the training. They're good jobs. They pay well. They, they won't be out of a job if, if you know, they know their stuff. Yeah. So, well, that, um, but that, let's, yeah. let's look at the other side, Leslie, because yeah. you're, you're in a position to see it all. Um, if there is a lot of installation going on, I need a lot of people to help me put that together. Mm -hmm. I need people to help me build the infrastructure. They have to be trained. They have to be knowledgeable. And they have to be up current on the latest 
you know, technologies and installation right. techniques. Right, and that's kind of the catch because it's not just the trades now, but it's it's IT. That's really a big part of these installations, right? That, you know, not too long ago, we weren't concerned about can you get the profile from your home computer, what your system is doing, or can the utility communicate with you or the aggregator that's going to... Now you got to so, know about so that. So now we have I, IT guys that are doing... Two different skill sets. Uh, you, completely you're, different. Yeah, and, your installers um, will have one skill yeah. set. They're not going to do... And, and you're right, the, the, the really critical, which is a higher level and higher paying skill set, is it's, it's comms or, or low voltage electricity. Really, um, people who can deal with installing meters, um, calibrating and configuring inverters, connecting those to communication systems so that you can see what's going on in the inverter. That is, that's a very well paying job. Have to be licensed? No, no, I don't think so. Oh. I, I think, and the it's, unions were trying, last yeah, time I looked, yeah. were mm -hmm. trying to train people to do that. But hmm. wait, let me, let me but throw I'm this sorry, one. I, I, I didn't let you get to the end of your question, did I? Yeah, the, I'll, yeah. I'll throw this one at you. Okay. Um, you know, we have seen, courtesy Marco Mangelsdorf and his various um, research, you know, uh, adventures uh, around the state trying to figure out how, oh, how yeah. the solar industry is doing. Yeah, we all rely upon him to do that. <laughs> He's fabulous. <laughs> it is, it is. Hi, Marco. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Marco. It's very helpful. <laughs> but, you know, in large yeah. part, with a few exceptions, it's been down for the past couple of years. I mean, dramatically down, and some of these companies are going out of business or found other models, you know, we see it all the time. If you don't have a lot of installations going on, Westlock, you know, as Shannon reported, would be really good, a big project and right. a lot of people. Um, but for the most part, if, if, if installations are down the way they generally are, then jobs are down, right? Right? Am I right? They are, and people did lose their jobs for sure when NEM closed in 2015. There was quite a slump. Um, but luckily, the skills that you have in order to do installations are transferable. So the construction industry has been pretty solid the last couple of years. So they just years. go into construction. So there is. I think people probably move to the mainland too to find other work. But um, it's not like you have this special skill that isn't applicable in any other way. And the same would um, apply to the IT world, right? That it's the, if you are able to make sure something's connected, get the profiles right, be able to connect it to the utility and all that. If, if you have that skill, you have that skill to do other things in other parts of that IT industry. So is this a career? You know, I mean, some people say, well, in, in 2040, we'll be all done, right? We'll be all finished. We'll, we'll reach our 100%. Everybody can go home now. Pencils down, right? No, 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 no. That's not how that's going to happen. Because let's, let's move forward to 2040, okay? We're going to have somewhere between, you know, depending on who you talk to and who you believe, somewhere between four <clears throat> and maybe six or even eight gigawatts of solar. <coughs> no. <coughs> Excuse me. Must be something that I said. I, mm, I got water, but right. I think I'm good. Okay. Um, right now, I think we have think about, about 2040. <laughs> we have about a fifth of that. Not. We have about, I think, about 800 megawatts of installed solar in, in, in place today. Mm. Um, that equipment has That's a huge percentage of the whole bailiwick. That's terrific. Yeah. You know, maybe. Um, that equipment's going to be aging out. And between now and then, there's, there's repairs and maintenance and troubleshooting that's going to need to be done. You know, there's, it's amazing to me, and I've been watching it pretty closely, you know, there's probably a half dozen to a dozen players out there that are getting into the O&M business, right? They're that's hiring that's people, for. operations and maintenance. Right, so your equipment, it's not just, uh, I mean, the nice thing about solar, it doesn't have any moving parts, but I would venture to guess that there's quite a bit more solar that's not performing as designed right, right. today. Because? It gets uh, dirty. An inverter, you have yeah. a, I had a yeah. system that was out. You need to clean it. Yeah, you gotta yeah. clean it, that's one thing. Yeah, a lot of things not done. I, I, I had a, a, yeah. a, a fuse that blew, so a whole string was down for several months, and I was watching it. So we were able to troubleshoot. We called in a guy who knew how to work inverters, and he knew how to do electrical, and he troubleshot it and found, yeah, it was a blown fuse, you know. But there's a lot of that. We, I pay attention to the stuff that we manage. There's a lot of stuff out there that people 
You know, if, if you own a building, all you pay attention to, if you own the solar system and you own the building, you don't have a third party that's either, you don't have a, don't have a contract for the, for the operations and maintenance, you're not monitoring it. You could have a significant amount of those panels or strings that are down and not even know it. Not even know it. Well, yeah. you, but you, surely there'll be technology to let you know it and look at a screen. Well, there's technology today, it'll, it'll tell but you. people aren't right. monitoring. Yeah. But what's the useful life of a panel? You know, we've all seen years. panels. 35, 35 years. years, really? Yeah. Is it, it could be shorter or longer, but that that'd be the predictable, useful it, it's, life? It's, it's, that's actually probably on the long side for some of the earlier stuff. There's stuff on the North Shore, fully Judd installed, that panels he sold in the 90s that's still, or even the 80s, it's still yeah. kicking out zoomies. Yeah. I, I can see the need for putting in electronics that will tell you when the panel is less efficient. Right. Yeah, the, the predicted uh, life of an inverter is about 12 years. Uh, so the inverter, the so inverter. yeah, everything doesn't go at once. So, right. Um, like and the that's Deacon's where, chariot. Yeah, remember that? Right. <laughs> really? Is that how that works? Remember the Deacon's <laughs> chariot? <laughs> the Deacon's chariot. It's, it's a poem. It's a, a 19th century American poem. It's about a deacon uh -oh. who was going to build a chariot to last for 100 years. And he did. He built a chariot to last for 100 years. And on its 100th birthday, everything fell apart. <laughs> Awesome. That's the Deacon's yeah. Chariot. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Early American <laughs> literature. Anyway, so yeah, you know so the other thing that, that upsets that apple cart is the fact that there's new technology. I, I can tell you this as a matter of fact, even though it's a speculation, um, that new, new technology that's going to come in on the inverter side and, and on the panel side oh, yeah. sooner yeah. than 35 years yeah. that is going to speak, you know, strong influence to every owner and say you buy me now because I'm going to be more efficient for you and you might as well forget about the remainder of the useful life on your 35 year piece of gear. Isn't that going to happen? Well it'll happen different depending on the different site. If you have a site that is has a NEM, a net energy metering contract and they built a system that covers all their load, um, free is a lot better than better, right? So. As long as their bill and they're paying their $18 a month, they're probably not going to touch it. They might upgrade the inverter because they want a little more bells and whistles, and the utilities control been very supportive of that, that control yeah. and having well, inverters now you, now that are smarter. Now you have to, right? Yeah. That if you, if you touch if it, your yeah. inverter, if you touch your inverter, it goes to put for whatever reason, or you decide to add more panels to an existing NEM and just do behind the meter cell supply. You need to upgrade all of your inverters, but what what customers are finding is that the inverter that they bought before doesn't exist anymore. Right. So now they're going to get another inverter, same manufacturer probably, but yeah, it's not exactly the same. Now it does all the bells and whistles, but maybe the the output is slightly greater. And yeah, so things will change and evolve. And, yeah, and maybe those new yeah. inverters are going to be so people, good. And people need to know that, that you um, have to yeah, replace let's, your, just, let's just modify what you said there so people don't freak out. Uh, companies like SATCON, right? If you had a SATCON inverter, which is really a commercial inverter, it's not a residential. S A T C O N. Yeah, they went under. They're gone. But if you had an Enphase or an SMA or a Solar Edge inverter you installed so many years ago, those companies are still around and they're still. Um, doing as well as any company in the solar industry, you know, they're selling volume. So they're going to be around to honor warranties. I think people oh, yeah, will be concerned, and, and it would be important for you, you know, if you have, a, like I have Enphase on my roof, I, I have a couple systems that we work on that are, we have SMA, we have Solar Edge. You want to make sure those companies are out there and healthy and, and doing well. But this so raises a very interesting point, to that? And that This raises a very interesting point. It's, it's um, sort of global leadership in energy. People see Hawaii as a global leader. And sometimes I think that's accurate and sometimes it's not accurate. But, you know, um, you can talk about the trade school where the fellow, a girl, knows how to install the stuff and knows how to you know, integrate it and all that. But you can also design it. You can go to the College of Engineering and design new, new equipment, new software, what have you. Uh, HNEI doing this actually right now. Um, and then you can actually have a company. You can have an entrepreneurial moment and establish a company. And that company could be a leader and could compete with all these well, the ones you mentioned. You know, that's a really good point because one of the things that you need to do, um, depending upon what county you're in, is um, on Oahu for commercial systems, you have to get an engineering stamp. 
So you might need to get electrical, mechanical, or electrical, structural, civil, depends on what the system is, but it has to be a Hawaii stamp. And I do know that these companies here in Hawaii do compete with mainland companies that might want to be doing the engineering, but you have to have a Hawaii stamp. And on the big island, for residential and have commercial, have an advantage if you're local. It, you totally advantage if you're local. So, because there's another example that you, it, the work is being done here. It's 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 uh, it's not going to work. So we have to build an industry. Them. How do you do mm -hmm. that? As you guys suggested, you got to train people. You got to offer them opportunities to become expert. And I, my my point to add is, you got to offer them, you know, a high level uh, scientific, technological, scientific training if you want to have them do entrepreneurial things. Um, but how do you organize this industry? What do you do? How do you have, let me make a guess, how do you have 20, 30,000 people who are dedicated to careers in energy here in the state? How do you do that? Including not only the installation, but the development, the science, all that stuff that the world will be the path to our door to get. How do we establish that? Do we need government help for that? Do we need industry help for that? How do we do it? Math and science and school support that. Aside sure. from the training, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do we, do we need to, for example, an organization. Both of you guys are associated with distributed uh, energy resources. I get that right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Okay, but suppose, yeah. I mean, do we need a trade association that maybe yours is the one that represents the notion of creating a sector um, of energy development, of, of, of I don't want to say a union, but you know, an association of trained energy specialists. Do we need anything like that? Yeah, there's, you know, if you if you talk to people in the tourism world, they'll talk about carrying capacity. Um, if you look at our energy system, we simply don't have the carrying capacity for installers, uh, an install uh, uh, an installer base at that size. It's my contention, and I've been I've thought this for over a decade now, that uh, Hawaii is not a really good fit for an R and D center, because R and D centers require a, a real critical mass of, um, of of money and universities that focus in that area. So Boston is kind of an R and D center. The Bay Area in energy, is, in, in 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 energy innovation in particular, um, we we might aspire to that, but I think that's a really um, you know the university would really need to retool itself around that objective. It would take a level of coordination and commitment that I'm not certain we're going to get to. I do think though that Hawaii is a very good place to be a center for art for. Um, um, not research and development, but test and evaluation. So basically, the world, the world's entrepreneurs with new technology, we would create a sandbox that entrepreneurs can come, and the utility can have a really yeah. big role in this. I, yeah, I and, think that's uh, a great and idea. University. So, we're, I, and, and that's I on the way to maybe bigger R &D things D in, the, in, the, in the future. In, in a yeah. sense. But I, I, mean, I want to ask you. It is testing and development, but I really do see Hawaii as kind of R&D in the field. To, well, that's test and evaluation. You know, yeah, 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 but, yeah, but, you know, there are a lot of different kinds of systems that are going in here. Right, and we're deploying, um, I mean, yeah. SEM's, SEM's a great yeah. example, you know, um, NSYNC's a great example, uh, Go, Go Electric, great example, where people develop some concepts, they get them to the commercialized stage, and they deploy it in this market um, and validate that it's a commercializable uh, product commercialized yeah. technology that's viable, then they get taken to the world. Well, I think your point about testing uh, is it's, it's a way into that. In other words, first you become good at testing. Testing is really important. Anybody in electronics will tell you that. Um, so now you, you, you have specialists mm -hmm. and, and you have accumulated equipment and you have designed equipment to do testing and integration and all that. We are doing that. I mean, I see that happening. Well, look at but the at some point, too, you know, right. 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 Well, that's right. It's right. a I mean, very good point. It's all about you know, an incubator, right, for good ideas. Some of them are market ready. Some of them are just two smart people in a garage that have this thing they're going to do. So, yeah. 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 We want that. We do. We, we right. want to reach critical mass and in even some way or another. Programs, yeah. They're focused around the test and evaluation level, not the R&D level, right? The pure physics, pure electronics. Really, once 
somebody's kind of put together something, the incubator is a good place to go and do a test and about, you know, yeah. a site project, a pilot for that. That's, that's I, the key. I, I, I can tell you as a matter of fact that these inverters will become better. There are better possibilities, more control, we call it bells and whistles or more sophisticated electronics, whatever it is, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. And it could happen here. Why? Because we have the test bed and we know what goes on. It's like, well, the, it's like designing yeah. hotel software. Mm -hmm. This could be one of the best places in the world to design hotel software. Um, because you have hotels. Right. Uh, right. But let me ask Everybody's you. Everybody's trapped here on the island. So right. We're going to do it. Like, it's got to work. <laughs> so let me ask you the big question. You were you were beginning to read a list of jobs. Um, I, I would uh, like to. Uh, I would like you to sort of tell the people what jobs are out there. You know, those who might consider careers in this area, and if you would give them an idea about how much they could make now and in the future. Okay. Ready. Go. Oh my God! You just, just give me. That's a hard question. I actually can't speak for the money exactly, but I do know, generally speaking, that they're good paying jobs because there's a lot of competition. What, 60,000? Um, yeah, I think that's fair. Um, if you're an electrician, you're going to make a lot more than more, that. A lot more. Oh, 70,000? Yeah. Oh, no. 80,000? No, no, no. no, no. no, no. You'll, you'll, there's a electricians license for electrician. can make, One electricians who will work oh, yeah? Yeah. Can, can, can make but, well but, into six figures. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. So, so there's work in the trades. Um, there's um, work for designers, there's work for engineers, there's work for salespeople. Things have gotten a lot more complicated. It's, 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 uh, it's, good. it's hard to explain, you know, yeah, and yeah. They're, they're good jobs. Um, there's work for people like me to, <laughs> to, to, we need more of me, you know, to go down to I've the legislature. Yeah, I know, I, that home cloning kid, it didn't work well. If you ever see her around, that didn't work well. Whenever I don't behave right. Uh, so, um, uh, working with policy, working with the commission, dealing with, you know, permitting, planning. So, there's really something for every type of personality and skill set. What about um, entrepreneurs, Ted? You, you've been close to the entrepreneurial end of this. Um, is there, you know, is there room for some, you know, vigorous young, I didn't say young, forget that, a vigorous uh, <laughs> business person who has an entrepreneurial kind of bent on things Absolutely. come in here and, and, and whip some companies yeah. up. What do you think? Absolutely. What kind of companies would they be? Well, I mean, we have an open position right now for uh, an account executive. So um, there, somebody has to sell what all these installers are installing. So there's absolutely room for that. I mean establishing a new company from the ground up. Are there ent entrepreneurial possibilities? Do you there see there are? There are. Um, speaking as a business owner, uh, having owned previous businesses, that's a uh, it's not for the faint of heart. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of barriers. Um, it's a complex business environment. You know, this. Um, I, I I think people are well intended, uh, but the amount of laws that are in place. You know, in fact, my I'm kind of on a kick to, you know, kind of say to, you know, a lot of people get upset at, at when we've talked about this, Department of Planning and Permitting, it, it, it can be difficult to get a per permit to do something here on this island. Um, you I, heard this here on Think Tech. <laughs> I, 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 you can talk about problems that TPP has had historically and where they are today. I think they've made great progress. Um, they're still working to make better progress, but I, all DPP does is execute the ordinances of the city. It's really city council needs to start figuring out, and with, with, count, with advice, but how can we, are there things that we can remove? Is there ordinances that don't really serve a robust purpose that we can get rid of? And we can, you know, because we really need to reduce the cost to deploy equipment. That, that actually brings me to, to my last question. And it's something that Ted said. It is something that Ted said. Oh, okay. <clears throat> you know, like it or not, we're changing the world. I mean, the energy initiative I in this like state it. is changing the yeah. world. You guys are involved yeah. in that. And it's very exciting. You know, it's a transformation, not only of that industry, but of our economy and our way of life. Um, we're not only a model for ourselves, we're a model for other people. And so is a transformation happening, and we should never forget that. Mm -hmm. But transformations, you know, mean testing legal barriers, 
transformations require lawyers. You know, and I, I ask you, are there enough energy lawyers in this town? Sometimes, <laughs> no. sometimes I think, no, no there are not. No. So and hard. what kind of a career does yeah. that offer? Is that a worthy career? Is it a high pay it's career? A, what do you it's think? It's a very complex market space. <laughs> There aren't enough. Uh, there aren't enough. There's no and question I mean, there I mean, really, and they're all probably all conflicted out. So problem. So so it, it's uh, you know because there are so many clients and there's so many attorneys and you can't take on a client that's in conflict. It, I mean, it starts to get as you know very touchy, though, dicey. right? Very yeah, dicey. Right. So um, um, I think there's room for more uh, climate change attorneys. Energy attorneys all works in together. Um, the, the work is definitely there. Is there any money in it? Uh, you know, it, I kind of guess it depends on who you work for. I think for some, there's probably a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you work yeah. for Ted, it's big bucks, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, if you work uh, for utility, you're going to be fine. Right. Uh, if you right, work for government, right. you're going to be really the okay. You're, you're kind of in there, in you know. There. If you if you're in a private practice, um, I don't. I I think that obviously attorneys might have to take other work. It kind of depends. Like a new attorney, they probably don't get all the really fun jobs, right? Yeah. They're going to get other other things that they're going to need yeah. to do. Doing something like that, I do. Um, you know, I, I, it's, I, I'm, it's a very good I'm, thing I'm, you're an attorney. I'm you need to be an attorney. I'm probably not going to retire Leslie. next year or anything That's like that. Okay, but but, still but like I love what anyway. I do, yeah, and uh, um, I, it's, uh, it's worth it. Well, I, I, yeah. think, I think the interesting thing about it is it's a specialty. It is. And we yeah. know among the three of us that that specialty will grow in the future. Yes. As the industry gets more complex, as the legal framework gets more complex, we'll need more lawyers, and the lawyers in that field will make more money and they'll be able to concentrate. You know, the problem with getting into a new legal field is people pull you away for other things. You get distracted. Client comes comes in and says, I, I don't care about your energy thing. You know, help me with this real estate. Uh -huh. And say, okay, well, I'd like to do that. I'll do that. And then, you know, you're, you're not specializing anymore. You're, you know, you're abandoning what you, you had decided. Bills. You've got to pay the bills. The old story and so many specialties in Hawaii have been degraded because of that process. We're still a small town in that way, you know. Mm -hmm. But but so, if a person is determined to be an energy lawyer, I think there's a great future in that. You've got to so stick too. to it. They you know? stick to it, you know. They're good speakers and writers and they can put up with it sometimes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great job. Closing words. Ted, you first. What, what message do you want to leave with the people about jobs, employment, and the energy field here in Hawaii? Today? Well, I, I, regardless, this isn't just specific to energy, but um, the reality is um, be, be entrepreneurial um, <laughs> with your career. You, you, you are the master of your fate. Um, you know, it's kind of in your hands as the decisions you make. Uh, it really is uh, a lot of elbow, elbow grease working hard, you know, like you're saying for uh, energy lawyers, it means that you need to come to understand the field that you're lawyering for. You, you need to understand that, you know, a lot of folks go into lawyering because, you know, that math and science wasn't really attractive or they weren't really gifted in it. Well, you got to kind of get back into that. That'll learn the math bit. and science. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. But it'll reap an advantage. Yeah. So, um I think people just need to be adaptable. They 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 need to think about and uh, you know what where what direction do I want to go. Talk to people in it. Be willing to do some pro bono work to get into it. If you want to do a you know when I I changed careers when I did the change, I my pay dropped significantly. You work at it and you and you get there. Yeah, great great advice, Leslie. Um. I think that if you want a job in in green energy, the job is there. To just be you know curious, um, work hard, talk to people, and as we went down all the different kinds of jobs, I think there's something for everybody. So um, it doesn't hurt to experiment and try different kinds of jobs. The opportunities are definitely out there. And be willing to start at the bottom. There's a lot to know. Uh, it's really important to have the context. 
So just because you have the skill, you're a math whiz, or you, that's not going to be enough. You need to really understand the politics. You need to understand what went before and why certain ideas haven't haven't worked. Not just that they didn't, but why. Yeah. But it, the work is there, and, and Hawaii is such a great place to be. And yeah. we're going to do it. That's the thing. We're going to do it. That you're going to be part of something that the whole world is looking at. So they should call you, huh? <laughs> they should call you, yeah. Ted? <laughs> call these guys. Ted Peck? And if you call me, I'll give you his number. <laughs> and Leslie Cole yeah. Brooks. Call Leslie. And the one thing you guys haven't stressed enough for my money is it's fun. It it's is. exciting. When things work, I, I, edge, just, I just sound, I'm so happy about that. Yeah. It's great. It's and great. some good things might be happening here in the next month or so. Oh, so. But you can't talk about it just Not yet. Not quite yet. All right. Now, yeah. You'll yeah. be back. So I'll come back. I'll yeah. tell you about yeah. it then. You don't, yeah, don't leave town. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie Colbrooks and Ted Tech, thank you so right. much, you guys. Thanks, great Jane. to see you. Aloha. Yeah. Thanks for having us. <laughs>